In this video, we are going to solve a few numerical questions on Hess's law. And before we do that, let's take a quick recap on what is Hess's law. Okay? Hess's law states that the total enthalpy change of a reaction is the same irrespective of the path it takes, whether the reaction happens in a single step or in multiple small steps. That is, the total enthalpy change for a reaction can be expressed as the sum of the enthalpy changes of the individual reactions that it can be broken into. And under standard conditions, this transforms into the total standard enthalpy change of a reaction is equal to the sum of the standard enthalpy changes of the individual reactions or the steps it can be broken into. And by standard conditions, we mean 298 Kelvin temperature, 1 atmospheric or 1 bar pressure and 1 molar concentration of the reactants. And this is possible only because enthalpy as we know is a state function and simply depends on the initial and the final states. It does not depend on how the reaction has attained these states or what path it has taken. Alright, so this is a brief recap of what Hess's law is. So let's use this concept to solve a few numerical questions now. Okay, so the first question that we have here is using the table below, identify the correct expression that represents the standard enthalpy change for the reaction CaCO3 forms CaO plus CO2. So you can see that this reaction can be broken into two independent reactions as we can see here. And we also have the corresponding delta H0 values for these reactions. So let's use this information to figure out the standard enthalpy change for the reaction given here. So how do we go about this? So we can solve this question by using the Hess's law. So in order to do that, let's look at the first equation here. It says 2Ca plus O2 forms 2CaO. Now if you compare this equation with our desired equation, you can see that both of these have the calcium oxide term on the product side. The only difference is that here we have two moles of calcium oxide being formed, but in our desired reaction, we have only one mole of calcium oxide being formed. So that means we need to divide the entire equation by two. Now remember, whenever we make any such changes like multiplying or dividing an equation by a certain factor, we also need to make the corresponding changes in the delta H0 value. So in this case, since we are dividing this entire equation by 2, we also have to divide the corresponding delta H0 value here, A also by 2. And when we do that, we get this. Ca plus half O2 forms CaO and delta H0 becomes A by 2. Let's now look at the second equation. Here we have calcium carbonate CaCO3 at the product side, whereas in our desired equation we have CaCO3 at the reactant side. So that means this equation needs to be reversed. And when we do that, the sign of the delta H0 value also changes. Here it is plus B and when we reverse the equation, it becomes minus B. Correct? So now you have CaCO3 at the reactant side and delta H0 for this reaction as minus B. Now when we add these equations, certain terms get cancelled and we get the final equation here. As you can see, this is the same as what we wanted and the delta H0 value for this reaction would be delta H0 R is equal to A by 2 minus B. So this is the expression that represents the standard enthalpy change for this reaction using the information given here. So let's look at the next question now. In this question, we need to calculate the standard enthalpy change per mole of ICL3 that is formed. So we have certain reactions here and the corresponding delta H0 values as well. And if you look at the first equation, you can see that the product side has two moles of ICL3, same as what we need in the main reaction or a desired reaction. So clearly we don't need to make any changes in the first equation. And if you look at the second equation, you can see that I2 gas forms I2 solid. Now solid iodine is at the reactant side in our desired equation and here we have it at the product side. So that means this equation needs to be reversed and as a result the sign of delta H0 value also gets reversed. So when we do that we get I2 solid forms I2 gas and the delta H0 value for this reaction would now be plus 38 kilojoules per mole. Now here again obviously we need to use the Hess's law. So all we need to do now is to simply add these equations and when we do that the I2 gas terms get cancelled and the final equation is same as the desired equation 
I2 solid plus 3 Cl2 forms 2 iCl3 and the delta H0 value corresponding to this reaction is minus 214 plus 38 which is equal to minus 176 kilojoules per mole. But wait a minute, the question says calculate the standard enthalpy change per mole of the iCl3 that is formed. In this case we have two moles of iCl3 being formed. So the enthalpy change per mole of iCl3 would be half of this value, right? Exactly. And that gives us the final standard enthalpy change per mole of ICL3 as minus 88 kilojoules per mole.